Okay. So today, hope you have a lot of time, because today I need to talk to you about the millennium, the great white throne judgment, and the new heavens and the new earth. How much time do you have? Do you have to three o'clock today? Well, no, I'm going to have to speed up. I'm going to have to speed up with that. But these all follow what we've been studying lately. We don't always know the calendar, but we know the prophetic calendar that these will follow after Armageddon. We're sure about that. So please stand with me this morning, and let's look at a couple verses out of the book of Zechariah, out of the Old Testament, very prophetic book. Zechariah written 500 years before Jesus came the first time. All right, so 2,500 years ago, Zechariah has lots of great prophecy for us. So Zechariah 14.1, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. Verse 4, And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. Now, when we're caught away in the rapture, it doesn't land on the earth. We're caught into the clouds to be with him. But when he comes back, that Zechariah is talking about, as you can see, he's going to land in a place he's very familiar, the Mount of Olives, where he would spend the night sometime with his disciples and go there the first time he came. Well, when he comes back for this, what people call the second coming, he will land on the Mount of Olives. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. Who is a saint here in the house? Raise your hand. Now, if you're not sure, you say, Pastor, you don't know all the stuff I do. Or maybe your tradition was we pray to saints. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't pray to saints. We pray to the Lord Jesus Christ, period. God the Father, not saints, all right? That's not right. But when you accept Jesus, you're a saint. You're a saint. So saints, good morning. We're all saints, and the saints are coming back with Jesus that have been raptured out during this time. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day, oh, it'll be a glorious day, it shall be the Lord is one, and his name is one. We used to sing an old song that said, God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and then we would sing, Blessed Trinity. That's what we're talking about. Our God's coming back, and He's landing on this planet one of these days, and it's going to be glorious. Jesus, thank you for that hope that we have. We know as we talk about the rapture on, it's the blessed hope. You're coming back. We believe, I believe, it's soon, Lord. How soon? Do not know, but we want to get ready. We want to make sure we're ready. So all of these dear folks that are here today, those that would be watching today, those that will watch this service sometime, Lord, on YouTube, may they just make sure that they are ready at any time for your soon coming. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and we thank you. In your name, everyone said, amen. You can be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. So what have we seen so far in our study this month? We've looked at the rapture that could happen any time. That means the catching away. You never know when Jesus is going to meet you in the clouds and the air. It also could be World War III. It may be what we're watching in the Middle East now. We don't know, but it's interesting to see who's involved. It's interesting to see who's talking about or thinking about getting involved when you hear things, rumblings about Turkey, Russia, and these others, because their territories are mentioned in Ezekiel. We've talked about that. We talked about the great tribulation, the abomination of desolation. That's what changes that seven years, three and a half years, pretty peaceful. The Antichrist rules, reigns, fixes the economy, deceives the Jews. They think that's their Messiah. But at three and a half years, as Daniel puts 1,290 days, he builds the abomination of desolation, an image to himself. The world will worship that image. He turns on the Jews, and the worst time in the history of the planet will be that next three and a half years. And then it's Armageddon, as we talked about last week, the last battle when the Antichrist, the false prophet, the devil himself, raised their fist to Almighty God. But Jesus comes back riding a white horse to conquer them. We come with him on white horses. He doesn't need us. Jesus does all the work. Like Jesus always does all the work. 
and he'll do it again in that particular war. So what's next on the prophetic calendar as we look at the calendar? And again, we don't know exact times, but all of these items that we're going to talk about, it's in the Bible. Read your Bible. Do some research. I love when you do that, when you reach out and ask questions. We'll talk about it. We know all of this is coming. When exactly, we don't know, but we believe very soon the dominoes are going to begin to fall. Maybe they're already falling before our very eyes. So the millennium is next. What Pastor Derek read to us here at the beginning of the service from Revelation 20. 1,000 years, Jesus will rule and reign on the earth. Now, with corrupt political leaders, who's going to be excited about a leader that's totally righteous in charge of this world? Anybody excited about this? Anybody excited about someone you can trust? Anybody excited about a leader that doesn't lie but is righteous and loves you? Praise the Lord. It's going to be a glorious time for a 1,000 years. Revelation 20, the first three verses, Pastor Derek read that to us. Satan is bound for a thousand years. Who's happy about that thought? We've all been tempted. You've been tempted to do wrong, to do things that aren't right, but for a thousand years, no temptation. He's bound. He's out of our face. He's gone for a thousand years during this entire time. No more deceiving people for a thousand years. You probably know this, but devil means deceiver. He is, of course, the ultimate deceiver. And if you see people deceiving others, the devil's behind all that. Because we read in the Bible, it's spiritual warfare is what's going on. He is thrown into the bottomless pit with the Antichrist, who's already there, the false prophet already there. And the book of Jude has one chapter. You could check it out. Verse 6 talks about rebellious angels a long time ago have been thrown into this bottomless pit. That is where Satan's going to go for a thousand years. Bound for a thousand years. Now I want you to check this out. This is just amazing to me. I, I love this. He's bound, and you can look at, at the verses yourself, not by Gabriel, angels that we know, not by Michael. Michael's an archangel, so he's a powerhouse. We know that. Not Jesus himself. Well, we know Jesus has all power. Who is he bound by but a some nameless, <laughs> powerful angel? We don't even know his name, but he's got enough power over Satan to bind him and change and throw him into the bottomless pit. Jesus doesn't even have to do it himself. That's an incredible thought to me. Satan is not equal to God, the Father, or God, the Son. Don't ever think that. Like their power, it's close. We see this dark world, and I think we think it's close between good and evil. It's not close, folks. It's not close at all. I think our problem is we grew up in the Star Wars era, right? Star Wars era. I love it too. We got people who work at Disney in this place. And I love that land and Star Wars. I love those movies. But you watch those movies, you're going to have a tendency to think the force, the good, and the dark side, it's close. You never know. You never know who's going to win. Is the dark side going to win? Or is the force going to win? It makes great movies, but there's no truth to it. It is not even close between Jesus Christ, God the Father, and Satan. No comparison between all of those. Don't think of Star Wars that they, man, evil is going to rule and reign. For a while it's happening. It's not always going to be this way. A thousand years are coming. There's going to be no more of this and beyond that for eternity. Not an equal in power. Knowledge or authority. Satan has nothing to compare to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's going to be proven out. Now what happens in the millennium? Worldwide peace. Won't we love it? No more wars. Worldwide peace will happen. Isaiah 9, 6, uh, predicting Jesus' coming, said he is the prince of peace. He's going to rule and reign. There will be peace. But he's also the prince of peace in your life. My life. 
If you have trouble in your life, Jesus can bring peace to your life. You have trouble in your family, you're not getting long, along. Why don't you pray as we do so often? Say, Lord, we need peace in this household. Can you bring peace here? He's the Prince of Peace. Many times I've prayed with families that are not getting along. We pray, Jesus, bring peace to this household, and He brings peace. He is the Prince of Peace even right now, and He certainly will be during the millennium. I love this. Isaiah 11, 8. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. So during the millennium, there's not going to be any poison bites of little children. You'd never let your kids get by a snake hole. No problem in the millennium. They're not going to die from a poison bite because peace, Jesus is going to rule and reign over the earth. And we know Micah 4, 3 said, neither shall they learn war anymore. Not only is there not any war, it's not going to be taught because it's not coming anymore. It's done. Armageddon was it. We're done with war on this planet forever. Well, can you believe it? This is in the Bible. You should read your Bible. Satan is released for a short time after those thousand years. Now, what in the world, God? What, what's going on here? He's released. Read it. It's in here. Check it out. Why? Because it's of such value to God the Father that you choose him. It is of such value to God the Father, he's not looking for a bunch of robotic Christians. That he's not looking for a bunch of Christians that are just in tradition. He's looking for Christians that are into relationship with him. You choose him. So just to make sure, because some will love Jesus during the millennium, Satan is released for a short time after that, the Bible says. After that, a thousand years, that there's been perfect peace. Can you believe it? Some will once again follow the devil. Some will follow him. They'll believe the deceiver. Again, Revelation 27 through 9, check it out this week. They'll follow this, the deceiver after a thousand years with Jesus. Unbelievable. I think of myself, I think, how dumb am I sometimes? The dumb things that we do, that will be a fatal mistake there. So have you ever had this question? I get it as I share the Lord on our streets and around. A lot of times people say, why does a loving God send people to hell? Ever heard that before? What's wrong with your God? He sends people to hell. Well, these thoughts I've had here about the Lord and Satan being released, all these kinds of things, I was thinking about that. We know he doesn't do that. You make the choice. We have free choice. Matthew 25, 41, Jesus said this, and let me explain it to you here. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. What's the point of hell? What's the point? Who's supposed to go to hell? the devil and his angels. That's what hell is for. Not for you. Not for human beings. You make a choice. It's your choice. Do you want Jesus? Do you want heaven? Do you want hell? No one would say hell, but you make that choice. We get a choice. God wants you to have free choice to choose to follow him, serve him, love him. It's your choice. Hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. That's what that place, that miserable, that horrible place is for. God doesn't want to say to you, depart from me. Now I was working on this sermon. I was studying. I was praying. And I've never heard an audible voice of the Lord, but I've heard what we call a still, small voice. That's in the Bible. Elijah heard that. You got to listen. Sometimes you got to be quiet. Listen. By the way, you're praying for an answer from the Lord. Be quiet. Jesus, I need an answer. What's the college? Am I supposed to marry this person? Should I do this? Should I do that? You ask it. Then be quiet. Give him time. He'll show you the answer. Right? We need to listen to him. So as I'm praying and I'm thinking about all of this, I just felt like the Lord saying this to me. So let's go eyeball to eyeball. Okay, all you dear people over here, look at me. 
All you dear people, look at me. All you great people, I want you to look at me. All of you wonderful people, look at me. Everybody in the balcony, look at me. And if you're online, whenever you watch this, just look me right in the eyes. I just felt from the Lord in my spirit, the Lord saying, let the people know, listen to me. I don't want to ever say depart to you. I never want to say these words. It's not my will. Hell is for the devil and his angels. Jesus does not want to say this to you, but it's your choice. It's your choice. You choose. Either you choose him he said, I'm not choosing hell. You don't choose him, you chose hell. It's the way it is. Say, Pastor, come on. It's the way it is. Depart from me. He, he just dropped it in my spirit so strong. Do you remember? Maybe you do remember when Jesus, the Gospels talk about, so he's, he's headed for trial. He's going to stand before Pilate. They're marching him in. I think it's Luke says there's this moment where he's marching in. He's already told Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, I'll never deny you. He's denied him three times. And Jesus is walking, and I've been in that courtyard. So have you, Pastor Derek. We've been there, Pilate's Courtyard. I even saw a rooster there lately. I mean, when we went a couple of years ago, it's like the roosters are still around. Amazing. Walking there, that area where Jesus walked, he looks over, and there's Peter. And Luke said, they see each other. Do you remember that? Check out Luke this week. Okay, after he said, it, I'll never deny it, he denies him three times. Their eyes meet, and Luke, I'm pretty sure it's Luke, records it. Now, do you think Jesus had to look like, I told you so, you dirty fishermen? <laughs> or is Jesus' eyes of love? I warned you, but I still love you. And that's the feeling I had from the Lord this week, praying for you all. He does not want to say to you, depart from me. But if you don't choose him, he's going to say it to you one of these days. Don't make Jesus say this to you because this is not his heart. He'd rather say, welcome home, good and faithful service. That's what he wants to say. Welcome home to heaven. He does not want to say, depart from me, but he will if people don't choose him. You have a free choice. Follow Jesus all the way to heaven. Well, number two, then comes the great white throne judgment. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire or hell. Hell, the lake of fire. So John's vision, God the Father is on the throne, the Jews call him Jehovah, Yahweh. Remember what he said to Moses, I'm the great I am. Jesus would use that term too. He's always been, there's no beginning, there's no ending. God is forever, he's eternal. We're talking about that's the one sitting on this great white throne. If you go to the rapture, you will miss this judgment. You're already in the book of life. You're going to miss it. Some people believe middle of the tribulation, some the end of the tribulation. I don't. I'm a pre-trib person, they would say, before the tribulation. But whenever you go, if you've accepted him, you miss that white throne judgment. These are the people who live after the rapture, or didn't go in the rapture, they're alive during the tribulation or the millennium, these are the people, but they don't accept Jesus. That's who we're talking about, are going to stand before that throne someday. Doesn't have to be you. It's your choice again. We all have a choice to choose Jesus or not. 
Daniel 12, 2 says this about this time. And people will come to the Lord during the tribulation. It's going to be rough. It's the worst time ever. Some will accept him. There, uh, you can see in Revelation that God sends witnesses to people. Some will, but Daniel would say some are going to go to everlasting life. They didn't make the rapture, but they died for their faith. They accepted Jesus after. Some will do that, but some are going to go to everlasting death. That's coming. So I ask you, is your name written in the book of life? Now I looked around the church. This is a Bible. I found the biggest Bible I could find. Because I imagine the book of life is big. It has to be. All those who love Jesus, name written in the book of life. There'll be more people on this planet that have always, who have ever lived who aren't in here. There'll be more. That's sad. But if you accepted him, then your name is in the book of life. So I'm thinking about some of you this week. Some of you have been the actual book of life for over 50 years. You've been saved, you've been a Christian, you've been faithful, you've been committed. You've been in this book that God has, God the Father has, for a long time. And you are a great role model and example to us of faithful living for Jesus. Praise the Lord. But then I also got to thinking this week, and it just made me a little emotional thinking. Some of you have been in this book since this year. Praise the Lord. A lot of churches in America shut down after COVID. A lot did. And we've had our battles too. But to think of the people that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior over this last year, who now their names are in the book of life. I am happy that we have these doors open. We're functioning. I'm happy all the people we're reaching on Thursdays and other times. It's worth it to get people following Jesus and getting their name in the book of life. Because if you're not in here, you're not going to heaven. But if you're in here, you're headed for heaven. Praise the Lord. Is your name in the book of life? Make sure, make sure that it is. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? How do you get in that book of life? Romans 10, 9 tells us. Have you accepted him? Confess with your mouth. That's why I like the prayers we pray at the end. We're confessing with our mouth, but it means nothing unless you believe it in your heart. Do you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord? So we say it and we believe it, we're saved. We'll be in the book. Are you born again? What Jesus said to Nicodemus, regeneration of the Spirit. Nicodemus thought, become a baby again, Jesus? No, it's your spirit. Regeneration, you start over spiritually speaking. Have you committed to him? We don't only just pray the prayer, but we're committed to him. We're going with him all the way to the end. Have you committed your life to no matter what? More about that in a moment. Are you committed to him? Is he Lord over your life? Now, I meet a lot of American Christians, especially, I think, more of them than others. I love Jesus. I love my family. I love my relationships. I love my job. Well, we hope that you love your job. We have all these loves, all these compartments. What we're talking about here is Jesus must be over everything, everybody. He's got to be everything that we do. Every time we eat a meal, every time we have a conversation, at the job, he just should be flowing out. When you talk to your family, the holidays are coming. Come on, get ready. You say, oh, you should know this aunt or uncle that I have, Pastor. You would not want to come to my home either. It's an opportunity to share with somebody about Jesus Christ. Is he Lord? Is he master over all your life. You make a decision, you ask him first. Jesus Christ must be Lord of our lives. Amen. 
Well, then finally there's coming a new heaven, new heavens, and new earth. Now, I saw the new heaven and the new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. There's a crystal river, though, beautiful crystal river up there. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You brides are so beautiful on your weddings. Miss Danielle was beautiful for Mr. Julio I saw a week ago. But oh, the wedding in heaven, woo! It's going to be amazing. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Total presence of the Lord. If you've ever felt the presence of the Lord in church, on your own, in your car, in a hospital room when you were praying, if you've ever felt, oh, that feels like the Holy Spirit is on me. How about all the time, every day, nonstop, the presence of the Lord. Why wouldn't anybody want to go there? They shall be His people. God Himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe every tear from your eyes. There will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Oh, come on, Lord Jesus. Come on, Lord Jesus. So what's, uh, what's going to happen in the new heavens and new earth? Let's break it down. No more tears. It's okay. We know you ladies are more emotional than us guys. Sometimes us guys shed tears, and we should do that. Jesus did. There's no problem with that. There's none of that, though. In heaven, there's no more death. Now, some of you have had a lot of family members pass away the last few years. I see you sitting out here, and some of you have had multiples. I talked to Brother Al yesterday at breakfast, and I think you told me, brother, recently, or the last few years, you've had seven family members pass away. That's a lot to go through. It's a lot to lose, even though I'm sure most of them knew the Lord. We have that hope. Can you imagine no more death? No more tears. No more death. No sorrow. With more than tears, you're just brokenhearted. No crying. No more pain. Many of you said last week, you have pain in your body. Can you imagine? Does it blow your mind having one day from head to toe, no pain? Never again. Your body's glorified. Think about that. Somebody ought to just shout if you're in pain and go, thank you, Jesus, for that. Former things are gone. Now, I thought with the Lord, maybe there'll be a big video screen of our past life and all that kind of, we'll get to see Maybe we will how the Lord saved us and things we went through, but, I, but this says former things are gone. I don't think we will in heaven. It's all gone. And have you ever said something you, um, it's a regret you said it, haven't we all? Ever done something you regret doing that? In heaven, no more regrets, no more mistakes. It's all gone. No sun. Now, us California people love the sun. Well, Jesus is the light. He said, I am the light of the world. Guess what? Jesus coming up is the light of the universe. That's what he is and going to be. Revelation 21, 23 says that he's the light. No more sun, no more moon, no night there. Sunny every day, a great day every day in heaven. Now, have you done this? Have you ever said, I hope I make it through the night? You ever been depressed? You've been sad? You're going through a lot, and you thought, if, it just, if I could just make it to morning, if it could just be sunrise, if I can just hang on, I'm going through all these things. You'll never say that in heaven. There's no night there. Every day, let up because of Jesus Christ. No more problems there. You'll never say that again. Can I get through the night? Because Jesus is the light. No more curse. This world was cursed after Adam and Eve fell. No more curse. It's broken. The Garden of Eden is restored. That's cool. We're back to perfect places. The Tree of Life is coming back, Revelation says. And more. That's why I love this verse I've been using during this study. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard all God has in store. All of these things and more. He's going to blow our mind if you choose Him. If you choose Him. It's up to you all who you choose. 
So what is the point? Did I want to give you some history, all that's going on in the world? Let's talk about end times, what's going on with Israel these last few weeks. What is the point of all of this study the last few weeks? It's more than all of that. It's not just knowledge, no. Here's our action points. Jesus is coming soon, everybody. I don't know if it's less than five years. I don't know if it's less than 10 years. I can't guarantee any of that. It's just he's coming soon. Are you ready for him? Not ready for him. I recommend you get ready for him today before you go out those doors in a few moments. Are you born again? What Jesus told Nicodemus, you've been regenerated by the Spirit. You're a new man or you're a new woman. Are you committed to him through good times and bad times? We had a great teaching yesterday on creation versus evolution. It was really good for one of my science friends. He was so good. Gave us a lot of material for us as we share people, share Jesus and with others. When we were done here, and some of you know that, but our, our daughter and granddaughter were here were with us, and they got in an accident on the way home. In fact, an accident where they have, she has a new car, a little red Kia, totaled. Totaled that car. We got the call, and we went and found them down the freeway. Her little brand new car just wrecked. And we're thankful that they have some bruises, but they're okay, but it could have been so much worse. This lady, which she looks like she was texting, bigger car, didn't even break. And so just crushed this little red car. Different angles and whatever, that their lives would have been on the line. We praise the Lord for His protection. But do you praise the Lord through good times and bad times. You would think you go to church for a seminar on a Saturday, the Lord's going to protect you, right? Come on, Lord. We're in church today, and we get in an accident going on, and they didn't feel that way. They feel blessed to be alive. Praise the Lord. Are we committed to Him through good times and bad times? Action points. Get rid of the darkness and sin in your life today. If you're waiting, and people say to me all the time, I'm going to get right with God one of these days. What are you waiting for? You can't wait any longer. Today is the day of salvation. Come on. Today is the day. Don't leave these doors without being right with Jesus Christ. 100% you know that if he comes back today, or God forbid you have an accident and it doesn't go as well, you're with him. Get rid of that darkness in your life today, that sin. Why would anybody wait? One of these days, <laughs> we're running out of time. Get rid of the darkness. Who are you telling that Jesus is the only way to heaven? That's against our culture. You know that. You'll get along really well with people if you say, I, I'm a Christian. Awesome. You're Buddhist? Great. You believe in Islam? Great. We'll get along with people. We say, you're religious? Fantastic. And we don't bother to tell them there's only one way. Now, when you say that, it's trouble. <laughs> but it's the right kind of trouble. Because Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. Why can he say that? Because nobody else paid the road. Jesus paid for the road. Drops of blood all the way on the cross. He's the only one. He can say he's the boss. He's the Savior. He can say there's one way to heaven, and it's me. Jesus Christ, he can say that. He has the right to say that. So I don't care what this culture says. There's only one way to heaven, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ, and we all need to get right with him today, but it's your choice. You make the choice. We should tell someone this week about him, but don't forget to do it in love. People will say, you're going to hell. It's true, but it's not very effective. <laughs> Isn't it more effective to say, I'm going to heaven. I know Jesus. I have a relationship. And he said, I just really want you to go to heaven too. Isn't that more effective? The witness of love. No compromise. Jesus is the way. But let's give him some love because Jesus said, they'll know we're Christians by our hate. By what? By love. Who you're telling about Jesus has done for you. And here it is, folks. In the end, God wins. In fact, he's already won. He already won on the cross. 
in the end, God wins. So it's your choice. I highly recommend you choose the Lord Jesus Christ. Worship team, come on up. Please stand with me this morning. Lots of thoughts for your consideration. Check it out. So much good material on this from Zechariah to Matthew to Luke to Revelation and more and more. But you'll get a lot of the future. The main thing, are you right with him and who are you telling him about? I'm going to love when this happens. This is part of the end. I'm going to love this. Paul wrote it. Therefore God has highly exalted him, Jesus Christ, and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of those in heaven, well, that's the angels, that's the saints that have gone on before, all of them should bow and they will willingly bow. And of those on the earth, that's us that remain should take a knee to the King of kings and Lord of lords. For many of us, it's not a problem. <laughs> Some people, it's a problem. It goes back to the question, is he Lord? If he's Lord, it's no problem. Of those on earth and those under the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, every day, demon in hell and the devil himself. Oh, come on. They're not going to like it. But they're going to have to take a knee and I'm going to so enjoy hearing the deceiver, the liar, the person that messes with us all. Satan himself will have to say, every tongue should confess that Jesus, you are Lord. Even Satan is going to say it one of these days in the end. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's coming. It's coming in the end. Praise the Lord. So like John and Jesus, this is how the Bible ends. He who testifies to these things says, and it's Jesus, surely I'm coming quickly, everybody. He's coming quickly. And so let's say what John said and let's say it together. Say it with me. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Let's say it together. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even so, come on now. Come, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's let him know we are ready for the king. We're ready for the king. Are you ready for the king? Anyone need to accept him before you go? Anyone need to make him Lord? He's not Lord of your life. You love him. Lots of people love Jesus. You believe he existed. Lots of people believe he's a historical uh, fact, in which he is. Is he Lord of your life? Anyone needs to get it right today before you leave? Anybody would raise a hand and pass her before we close? Please pray for me. I want to make him Lord of my life. It's your choice. I just try to present a case today why it's a great choice to make him your king. Anyone would raise a hand and say, pray for me? Or I used to serve him. I've walked away. But I want him to make, not just my savior, but I want to make him my Lord. Raise your hand if that's you. We'll pray. We'll worship. We'll pray for y'all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Let's do what that scripture I had in Romans. Confess with your mouth, but believe in your heart, okay, that Jesus is Lord. All right, so let's all say it. It'll help anyone else. Maybe raise a hand, didn't raise a hand, wanted to raise a hand. Let's all pray it together. Here we go. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only Son of God. And I commit to making you the Savior of my life for making you the Lord of my life. I ask you to forgive me of every sin, every mistake. I want you. I choose you. I want to live with you forever in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. 
Amen, amen, amen. Hey, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us for Church Online. If you received Christ today or need prayer, contact us. Connect with us on social media, Facebook, and Instagram at OC First Assembly. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out some of our past videos, and we'll see you next time.